a couple yards with some really amazing finds. Well, welcome to Finding America. It's really nice to see you here. Now, you don't have to travel to faraway places to find treasure. Now, sure, the call of the wild is definitely enticing, and it's always nice to find that lone, isolated spot that has never seen a human set a foot upon it in the last hundred years. But so many amazing treasures are waiting to be found right next door and in your own small hometown. Well, such was the case with this first hunt you're about to see. Now, I've hunted this place several times and you've seen it on video before, but with a little determination and the switch of a coil, I came away with some really amazing treasures. And I really hope you enjoy watching this one. Got another high tone here, it's giving me a 25. I pop the plug and there it sits right there. Looks like. Yep, looks like the bottom half to another compact. So a pretty cool find, pretty big one too. Well, I was just working alongside this tree that was blown over by a tornado years ago and uh, got a nice 18 signal. And I think I got a Tootsie toy, at least part of one cut clean off. Still got the front wheels and the front end. And um, kind of looks like a checker, but uh, hard to tell. Could have been a truck, but pretty cool. Late 50s, 60s. Well, this one was giving me a 16, 17. Pop the plug, move the dirt around, and I saw it immediately. Check that out. That is going to be some kind of brooch or pen. Yeah, it's a little bent up, but definitely an old one. Early 19, late 1800s possibly, but a very cool piece of jewelry right there. I definitely like that. Well, this one was giving me a 17, and uh, it said it was in a plug, and it sure was. And check it out. I got a nice lead hem white, most likely used in uh, the hem of a dress to keep them from blowing up in the air. So, nice little find. I was working along this old brick patio. And uh, got a nice high tone here, about 24-25. I dug down and, let's see, I got a weedy here. Now I cleaned it off to save a little bit of time, but it's a 1950. And so I was happy about that, but then I checked the hole and got another signal. And look what else I got. Check this out. It's like a leaf or something. Isn't that cool? I'm thinking it might be a jewelry pen. I don't know, or some decoration for a piece of furniture, but I'll get it cleaned up, but it, it's uh, it's definitely got some age to it, and definitely really cool. Just had to show you that one. Just working along this old patio, and got a 17 right up against it. And I just popped it and check it out. It's a penny and I'm thinking there's a good chance it could be an Indian. So I wanted to turn on the camera and we'll find out together. It seems to be pretty thin. Yep, it's definitely an Indian. I can see a wreath. How about that? Nice. That's gonna be the oldest coin I've found here so far. Yep, you can see the head. Looks like 1900 something. 1902. 
Well, let me see if I can get it out of here in the sunlight. Not too shabby. 1902. That's awesome. Well, there was one more thing that I wanted to do in this yard before I left for the day. There's a slope just below street level, and the ground there is absolutely full of trash signals, but they're old trash signals. So I went ahead and swapped my six inch coil, the small coil onto my Equinox to see if I could find some old treasures amidst all those old trash signals buried in the ground. Well, I'll tell you what, the lady who lived at this house definitely spent money on her cosmetics back in the day. Uh, another piece of uh, old cosmetics. And this one is a very cool, complete lipstick tube. Look at that thing. That is really awesome. And hopefully it'll clean up pretty nice. Be able to see if I can date it, but it, I don't know. Kind of looks 40s to me, but uh, we shall see. Very cool old piece. Well, we've got a nice little high tone here. Uh, and it was sitting in the plug on edge just like that. I put it back in there so you can see how I saw it, but I already cleaned it off. It's going to be a 53 with the Denver Mint Mark. So pretty cool. Uh, probably about five inches down. Well, it's kind of interesting. It's giving me a 16, and I dug down, and this is what came out. It's almost like a little shot glass or something. I don't know, but on the bottom, it's kind of rotted out at the bottom, but it does say made in Japan. Probably a pretty old piece. I'm gonna clean it up, and uh, maybe we'll get lucky there's something on it. But I just had to show you that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, this one was giving me a 17, 16, right around there. Uh, I put my digger in and pulled the dirt out, and my signal disappeared. And I'm looking for it and looking for it, and I'm looking at my digger. And uh, there it is. <laughs> Luckily, uh, nothing rare, but it's still kind of cool. Unfortunately, my digger did go through it, but it's an ever-ready flashlight. It's the end cap that you would unscrew to put the batteries into. And this is going to be uh, 1930s. That's a pretty cool piece, even with the uh, the gash, and uh, it was in pretty bad shape to begin with, but pretty neat, and uh, I got a chuckle out of that one. Uh, you'll have to pardon the noise, they're doing some construction across the street, but I tell you what, I am so happy because I just found another GW Gorel's grocery store token. I can't believe it. Look how deep it was too. We're talking 10, 11 inches. It was giving me a pretty, it, it wasn't super strong, but kind of a medium high tone. And uh, I finally popped it out. And now you may remember, I found one of these in this very yard. And this makes my fourth one for my collection. I now have four of these beauties. Now these were made in 1900 to 1910. They were brass, thankfully. I'll tell you what, yep, it's BWD Gorels. And uh, thankfully he had the foresight to make them in brass because they come out really nice for me and they don't deteriorate in the ground. And it's for 10 cents and it says, Good for 10 cents in trade at BWD Gorel's. And that was a very early grocery store uh, here in Newport, Tennessee. Uh, so thrilled to have another one of these. I love these things. I'm trying to find the $1 token. It's gotta be massive. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, I tell you, this is unbelievable. Uh, I just got that Gorel's token right there that for 10 cents. And then I got a 2324 signal here and I started brushing their dirt away slowly. And I think I have another one and it's a big one. Let me see if I can get you down in here so you can see it. Check it out. I think I can read it from here, 50. Oh, I have one of these, but uh, this will be my second one. Let me see. Oh, this one's been holed <laughs> with a square nail. I wonder if it's a, yep, it's a Gorel's. You can see this has a big number 50 on this side and it says good for 50 cents in trade at BWD Gorel's and someone slammed a square nail through it. Wow, 60 cents worth of tokens. And actually the other one I found was just a little further down the yard for a 10 cents. So 70 cents back in 1900, 1910 era. That bought a lot of groceries. So that is just awesome. I'm so thrilled to have this. And I'm gonna do a big group photo of all my Gorel tokens uh, and show those to you too. Wow, right beside each other, killer. Well, the next day, despite the heat that we've been experiencing, I wanted to go back to that amazing 1950s yard that I featured in the last two episodes. Now, I was positive that there were still things to be found in that ground, and uh, boy, were there. Well, someone was giving me a 19. I thought it was gonna be another zinc penny, but uh, actually turned out to be a key. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. It's, I think that one's got some age. Pretty unusual uh, shape to it. It's weird how it's cut kind of on that side and yeah but it says Hawk which I haven't dug one of those brands before but uh, pretty cool I'll get it cleaned up we'll get a better look at it well I barely had to pop a plug it was only about an inch or two down give me a 24 but it did turn out to be a weedy and uh, it's gonna be a 56 with the Philadelphia Mint Mark so I'll always take that. Holy cow. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's amazing. Uh, the last video that I put out, which actually I'm out detecting the morning it came out, Thursday morning because it's going to be raining all weekend and I don't know if I'm going to get much detecting done at all but I'm back at the 50s house and uh, on the side yard got a 15 now you might recall something pretty special that I found in last week's video and look at this yeah I just got another one I'm going to pull it out. It gave me a 15, just like the other one did. And look at this. As soon as I pulled it out, I knew what it was again. It is another Dragnet badge. Is that not crazy? He told me his dad liked uh, badges, and he wasn't kidding. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. That is really, really neat. So, I'm not going to clean this one up right now. I'm going to wait till I get home. They're pretty fragile and uh, I am just thrilled to death. You can see the Los Angeles City Hall Sergeant 714 Sergeant Joe Friday and these were brought out in 1955. That's just incredible. Well, I'll tell you what, I may have to call this uh, episode Deja Vu. <laughs> let me show you what I just dug up. Yeah, let me get in the shade here a little better. Another steel ball on the complete opposite side of the yard of the property. So I have no idea 
what was going on with these things. But I got two. <laughs> so, well, that's pretty interesting. I was not expecting another one of these. Well, later in the day, I was talking to the homeowner, and he told me how his father was heavily involved in arcade and coin-op machines, including pinball machines. Well, after I heard that, that definitely explained some of the things I was finding in this yard. Well, pinball machines first emerged during the Great Depression years, and Americans were definitely down on their luck, and they welcomed any inexpensive entertainment that they could find. Well, those first pinball machines were actually just tabletop units with no legs, and they had no flippers. So they would just launch the ball in hopes that it would land in a hole that would either give them a free play or even a prize. Well, a game of chance like that would definitely result in side bets being placed by onlookers. And this gambling aspect of pinball machines cast a shadow upon them, especially with authorities. And to make matters even worse, most of the pinball machines were actually made in Chicago, a hotbed of organized crime. Well, authorities in cities across the country began to crack down on the immoral gambling machines, and they were led by New York City Mayor LaGuardia. Now, he decided he was going to take a page from the feds that were raiding moonshine stills at that time, and he rounded up 2,000 of the machines, called the media, and destroyed them, with axes in front of the cameras. Well, they then loaded up all those machines onto a barge and en route continued whacking on them with axes and then pushed them overboard and sank them to the depths of Long Island Sound. Well, pinball machines didn't really regain full acceptance until the 1970s when the industry sent Roger Sharp the best pinball player in America, to prove to the New York City Council that pinball machines were now a game of skill and not one of chance. Well, that finally convinced the New York City Council to lift the restrictions on pinball machines and other cities across the United States followed suit. And once again, the pinball machine regained a huge popularity. And I have to say, I was a huge pinball fan back in the late 1970s. And my favorite machines to feed my quarters into were Star Trek, Evil Knievel, and Kiss. Definitely good times. Well, just going row by row in the side yard still, and uh, using the six inch coil, and pretty much the reason I'm using it, it was on the machine already, but uh, the ground is so dry and hard that anything past six inches is a real bear to get out anyway. So once we get some rain and the soil softens up, I'm gonna be using the big coil going back over everything, seeing uh, if I can pull any of the deeper stuff out. But right now that coil is working perfectly. And uh, I got a little twofer here. It was giving me a 22 signal. I dug down and I got a wheat penny. Now I really can't make the date out on this one just yet, but I checked the hole and believe it or not, nice little twofer. And this one I can read the date on. This one's going to be a 39 with the Denver Mint Mart. So two Wheaties, one hole. I will definitely take that. Now, I just got this one. I just wanted to show it to you. It was ringing up in the high teens. But it's an aluminum ring. I cleaned a little bit off so you could see some of the detail on it. But yeah, it's just a little kid's play ring. But uh, it's just another... Another relic from the past when these kids were playing in this yard. Well, this one was giving me a 19. Actually, it was high toning occasionally. And uh, I got another one, it looks like. Another deja vu item here. This one's going to be a little different. This is actually an Uncle Sam uh, play coin for an old Uncle Sam cash register. And these have dates on them. So it's very cool, almost as good as finding a coin. Most of them are in the 50s, but uh, sometimes you find an older one. Let's see, I can see the date, if I can just, I can't tell if that says 1958 or 38. I wanna say 58. 
Isn't that cool? Uncle Sam, 1958, 10 cent play coin. I'll get it cleaned up so you can get a better look at it, but uh, great little find. I love finding these. Well, I definitely like seeing this in the hole. Give me a 25-26 signal. I'm really going really low and slow over where his dad used to have his lemonade stand back in the 50s. And uh, yeah, I got another silver dime. This will be the third one from this area. The eighth one from this yard. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a silver dime. So let's go ahead and uh, spray it. See what we have. Oh yeah, I'm not, are you kidding me? Oh, I tell you, this is a crazy hunt. Look at that, it's a 1944. <laughs> I found two 44 silver dimes in the same hole about mm, five yards from here. And also another 44 in the front yard. Four 1944 dimes from this yard. That is insane. Wow. I will definitely take that and I'll get it cleaned up and get you a better picture of it. But uh, <laughs> that's just mind boggling. Well, if you hear the noise in the background, about two blocks away is that really old school I was talking about. And uh, they're in recess and man, oh man, those kids can make some noise. <laughs> but let me tell you about this. I just got shocked by what I just dug up. I was digging a, let me think, 19, 18, 19, about five inches down. I'm thinking it's gonna be a zinc penny. But look at this, I have a two-piece button. I kid you not, and it's a domed button. So I don't, I don't even know what it is yet. I'm gonna have to toothpick it, and uh, I'm gonna have to do that off camera because I don't wanna damage it. But, oh, you just never know what it's gonna be. And of course, I'm hoping Civil War. Uh, and a domed button is usually officers. Wouldn't that be funny if I found one, another one of those uh, veteran reunion buttons, Tennessee State Seal, but I'm a good 45 miles away from where we dug all those. So I'll get back with you and uh, we'll see what it is. Might just be a little flower button, who knows? Well, it looks like the teachers took the kids back into school. <laughs> it's nice and quiet again. And uh, I just kind of thumbnailed this and check it out. I am really happy with this one it is actually a confederate veterans button with the tennessee state seal on it but if you've watched my videos you know i found quite a few of these around the old mansion but like i said that's about 45 50 miles away this is actually another version of that button uh the other ones i found were made by pettibone so i'll be curious to see what makers on the back of this one but these are going to date from like 1870 to 1900 and it says commerce and agriculture around the button and then of course the state seal in the center with the river boat and the hay bale and very very cool so happy to have this and what a surprise this came out of a 1950s yard but there probably was a confederate veteran living in the neighborhood close by walking through the fields and uh may have popped one of these off his coat. <laughs> Just awesome though. Well, searching those normal looking houses in my normal little town certainly resulted in some really incredible finds. And that is definitely Finding America to me. 
And here's another look at all the great treasures that I found in this episode. Well, I just had to share some incredible historic images of small towns and the Americans who lived in them and who lost all the things that we now love to find so much. I know you're going to love these pictures and they're coming up in just a few seconds. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure. And I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America. Mm -hmm.